Hey everyone, welcome to Loud and Local. I'm Megan, and I'm pleased to have in the studio um, Wellfleet and uh, Pat Curry and Craig Roy. Yep. So I have to just start off with a little anecdote here. I have to tell you that I've seen you guys a handful of times, as you probably well know. Um, and the seed of this idea started when I was watching you guys play. Oh, really? So to have you guys here on my first show doing this whole thing is like, Oh, dream nice. come true. That's awesome. We're, we're psyched. Yeah, I don't know that you, if you guys knew that or not. So no pressure. Yeah, right. <laughs> maybe, or okay. maybe just a little. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But, um, so I'm curious. How did you guys meet? At a lobster beak. Yeah. Probably, I don't know how many years ago. Seven or eight years ago. Mm hmm And, uh, it was, it was kind of like one of those things where you know, you have, we have mutual friends and they knew that we both played music. So you just kind of get thrust into a com forced conversation. You guys both play music. Yeah. So you're like, hey, what's going on? Great, so you play music. And like everyone else yeah. just kind of disappears <laughs> in the background and we're just like left there. So. Just like talking. And uh, it's kind of funny because it's like, you know, it's, it's always the same thing where it's like, oh, you play guitar? It's like, oh, you play harmonica? It's like for musicians, for the most part, when you're not out playing and like you meet somebody else, it's like you like to meet them, but, you know, Unless you're like in the mood to jam or like play music, you're just like, oh, well, that's cool. Like, you know, what do you do? And like, you just get the basics. But then, you know, you, you, I, actually, he gave me uh, one of his CDs because you never really know unless you hear somebody. It's just like, it's, you, you, right. it's kind of just in passing. Right. And uh, so he had uh, he had given me one of his CDs, and I was like, wow, this stuff's like awesome. <laughs> like, I kind of want to play with this yeah, guy. Yeah. 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 Yep. So then we saw each other at that kind of on an, like every every year basically yeah, once a for year. a few years but yeah. we were both kind of doing our own thing uh different projects and so finally one year when we got back together it was like hey we're not actually doing anything so we should we should instead of trading cell phone numbers and being like i think he said his name was craig <laughs> uh, it was like we should get together so then we followed up on hey, that hey that guy that plays the harmonica <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that guy from adam's party <laughs> so yeah that's awesome yeah. so where where did the um idea for the name come from well, when we first started, um, we kind of had a discussion that we didn't really want to just pick a name out of the hat, just, you know, look in a thesaurus and find two goofy names that go together just because we wanted to mean something. And right. so we went out at first, it was just Pat and Craig. <laughs> and it was, I don't want to say it was awful because it's our names, but it's just really weird. It's like so, like, I don't know, for me at least, like it did, it meant like it's my name and it's his name, but it didn't really, it didn't really feel like, like a band name. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Um... Because, you know, we'd always had that discussion in the back where it's like, you know, eventually it'd be nice to introduce other players. But we were, I was actually down in Wellfleet um, with my family. My wife and I, we, um, you know, we took, like, some long walks on the beach and, like, just was able to get away and relax. You know, things come up in life that, like, stress you out a little bit. And it was mm -hmm. definitely, a, it was definitely a, a nice, relaxing weekend. And uh, that name, you know, just kind of stuck in my head. And we went down another time. And we were still Pat and Craig. And I was like, you know, I called Pat and... Uh, I was like, man, I really wish, like, I wish something that would just come to me and, like, you know, we could, like, just have a name. We didn't have to use just Pat and Craig anymore. Right. Not that I minded it, like I said. But, well, uh... Just we, Pat and Craig is... Yeah. That could work. It could. <laughs> it just, it just it, you know, I wanted something that, you know, it wasn't just, Like, I always feel weird with, like, having my name. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. just like, it's like, yeah, my name's Craig, but, like, you know, I want to be able to disassociate from it. Right. You know? Um, and we were walking by the library, and Sarah saw the sign, she said, uh, Wellfleet Public Library. She's like, what about Wellfleet? And she's like, nobody up there knows really, unless you're from the Cape or Boston area, nobody really knows, right. unless you visited there, like, that it's an actual town. Mm -hmm. You know, it just sounds like a nice place. And so I was on the phone with him, I was like, what do you think about Wellfleet? He's like, he's like, I don't, I don't mind it. And then I kind of explained to him, like, you know, that it, it meant something to me, like this place means something to me. He's like, I'm on board. He's yeah. Like, right, right, you know? <laughs> yeah, it was Monk. that easy. And that's the thing is like I think coming up with a band name is that easy, even though it can be kind of torture getting to that point. Right. But once right. you get to a you point, and you feel like justified. And, yeah. Like or or what have you? Like you just feel like oh okay, and like this actually has meaning to us. Then it's just like that's it. That's what it's gonna be. And then of course you hop online and make sure nobody else has that name. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Buy it now. Yeah. Yeah. Get exactly. the dot com <laughs> yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So you guys have been playing together how long? As I think Pat this is Craig five years. Wealthy? This is five years, I think. Yeah. Going into six, I think, in the fall. So we've been together for five years. Yeah. Nice. And just pretty much as a duo? Because I've seen you guys a couple different ways. Yeah. So. We were a duo all the way until probably... Was it At least a year and a half in. About a year and a half. 
Yeah, so we, we did about a year and a half. And, and actually, when we first got together, you know, we got together to, to jam, and it was just kind of uh, more just conversation like this. Mm -hmm. And um, just to get to know each other a little bit and kind of see where the interests are and, and, and you know, what kind of uh, we share in common. Mm -hmm. And uh, we found that we really clicked on a personality basis. And so it was like, oh, this is this is really easy going. It's to feel like we're just hanging out as friends. Yeah. And um, and we had the discussion right then and there. It was like, well, do you want to make this into like a big band or do you want just this to be a duo? And it was, I think Craig basically was like, I think we should just keep it easy and, 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 and be a duo and build it out from there. Yeah. And so we started as a duo. We played a bunch of shows as a duo and then Eventually, it was like, well, why don't we try building this out a little bit and seeing if there's anybody else who might want to play. And he met uh, Keith Foley, who plays bass, um, just kind of jamming with him on a, at a blues fest. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically said, hey, we should have this guy named Keith come come and play. And we were like, I, I just said, all right, sounds good. So he, he came to the next show, and we jammed, and it was a lot of fun. And we just kind of kind of grew on it from there. Yeah, we started doing the uh, first trio show I think we did was uh, over at the loft. Yep. And... Uh, you know, it's always like that first thing, you know, Keith shows up and, you know, has his little amp and his bass. And, uh, you know, we'd never played before. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, I had confidence in him to just, like, step right in. So we started jamming, and I was like, wow, this is, it sounded, yeah. I thought it sounded fine before, but, like, just that, any dimension you can add when you have a great player. Right. That can, like, contribute to it and be, like, what I would call an ensemble player. Like, he just listens to the the sound that you're aiming for, and he can add his two cents without stepping over Right. Anybody else and just, you know, really being... And just naturally do it. Yeah. Like there's yeah. no... Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, so... So, I mean, from there, then I think we ended up getting... Actually, we may have randomly gotten, like, a wedding gig. Oh, yeah. And somebody said, well, can you guys do a full band? And so we were like, oh, well, yeah, we'll try to see if we can figure that out. Quick, and make some it, phone calls. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So we kind of reached out to some folks and, and, um, and ended up finding Chris because actually Keith... Uh, Referred him, I guess, or whatever. Yeah, and PJ had said. given him a, a strong review too. Yeah, it's another player in our in our uh, kind of circle, circle of friends. And uh, and so basically, you know, we ended up getting together with Chris too, and did the four piece. And at that point, it was it was actually pretty clear that we should try to do a recording, which is why we ended up at the Garrison Players. Not. Yeah too long after that yeah. you know we basically said oh we should try to get this down because this is this is a lot of fun so it took the whole duo thing and when we did that recording we started we did we split up the set into kind of three different chunks we did a duo set yeah. and then we, br we brought Keith in to play kind of the second half of that mm -hmm. first uh, portion and then took a break and then did our full band set after that so that was like the first time that a lot of those people that, that came up to see us play had ever heard us in a full band format. So right, that was a lot of fun. Right, yeah. And all of that's available on YouTube too, it is, right? You yeah. guys can you can check out yeah. the different Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah it's, no, it's uh, really you can, if you go to YouTube you can just search Well Fleet Space Music and then you can find our channel right there. Mm -hmm. yep. Um and so back to the wedding thing for a second. You guys are like you like the two thousand fifteen <laughs> wedding crashers. I mean I feel like I look at your day, I'm like, I'm gonna go see a Well Fleet show. Oh. Well, they're doing a lot of weddings. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, I mean, it's, it was it's definitely not intentional, but I got yeah. fell in her eye, I yeah. should say. Right? So, yeah. like, we, you know. You take Adam Sandler to a whole new level. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> there's actually a lot to be said about it. It's like, you know, I, it's kind of funny, like, early on in my music career, there was kind of like that, that kind of like gimmicky, wedding bandy kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But what we've been able to do is, like, really kind of find, you know, couples who are, you know, like-minded as far as, like, personality and just, you know, if you click with them, mm -hmm. then, you know, you know it's going to be a good time. So you're like, all right, well, let's do this. And right. then pretty much, you know, any anything that uh, we play, like, every, everybody's, like, totally, like, been on board with. There haven't been any, you know, weird looks or anything because, you know, we have right. kind of an eclectic, you know. Yeah, you, know, you guys have a great kind of mix of mix. stuff. Yeah. yeah. And quite a few now, too. Mm -hmm. I think we're up, like, 175 songs that we can do. Uh, inclusive of some of our original stuff, but but a lot of, I mean, obviously a lot of covers, and and that's something that we actually put as kind of part of our offering when somebody says that they want to hire us is what we offer to learn like three to five tunes just for their wedding. So right. if they don't see it on a song list, that's like we'll awesome. just learn it especially it's like an for add them. Bonus. Yeah. yeah. So if you do ten weddings a year, you could mm -hmm. end up like we could end up learning thirty songs that year, which is which is kind of how more or less it's grown to be as big as it has mm -hmm. for the, that list. That list. So I'm curious, um, in terms of like, you know, you guys meeting and having like the similar personalities and, and everything, like what were the musical inf influences for both of you that like 
connected you guys. Well, I feel like it's it's different for every like everybody has like that yeah. one yeah. piece of music that's what draws them into playing music, you know. Right. When I first started, I was pretty much when I first started playing the harmonica, I got really into like you know roots music and the history of music and mostly like blues, jazz, all that stuff, and I had a pretty narrow vision of it. And then as it grew, you know, you start playing with like different bands. You kind of like are able to experience things outside of like the blues clubs that like I'd started out in. Mm -hmm. And then um, when I met Pat, he like brought a whole different, I don't want to say genre of music, but yeah, like the genre of music, I guess, that I'd never really listened to. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, he's introduced me to like tons of great artists that um, I probably never would have known about or checked mm -hmm. out on my own. It's just, it, that's had a lot of influence on like my musical taste as of, you know, the last five right. or six years even. And that's it's, and it's really advice. Vice versa too. It's almost like a yin and a yang a little bit. Yeah. I mean, it sounds cliche, obviously, but it's <laughs> right. basically, you know, Craig had the the blues and kind of that folky kind of background, and mm -hmm. I had more. I mean, it was singer songwriter, but it was pop. It was it was kind of like college bands, like mm -hmm. the Guster Dispatch type of thing, and so you know, Matt Nathanson, song singer songwriter type stuff, that I was able to kind of. That's that's the stuff that I had played. That's a, that's the, the I had played in previous bands, and those are the types of like crowds that we played for right so I had a lot of that background and a lot of that um experience I guess and that's kind of where my musical tastes were so so in kind of trading the different things that we that we knew and that we were kind of uh I don't know, prone to listen to I guess at the time at least initially it was like oh yeah I'm interested in Bob Dylan stuff if you're you don't even want to check out you know mm -hmm. this band the script you know I mean it was just there was a lot of that mm -hmm. right and uh and it just kind of was really Do you like guys I said, like trade playlists yeah, yeah like yeah. mixed like, discs <laughs> like, <laughs> we made mixtapes for each other yeah. it was good like, <laughs> no slow jams or anything <laughs> Yeah. It's legit. It's business. It's all business. <laughs> it's for the band. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. So um, we were talking earlier off camera. Um, certainly every show I've been to uh, to see you guys is always extremely eventful in some very unique way. Yeah, there's been is, some is interesting that, Is that the things. best way to put it, I think? Yeah, which is also <laughs> odd considering the places that we've played. Right. You know, like, a lot right. of times they're like, like, when you show up, it feels like it should be pr pretty reserved. and Yeah. Yeah, you know, we used right. to play. This like we're hotel gonna be background lounge. music tonight. I can feel it. Yeah. 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 yeah, we used to play. We used to play a hotel lounge, and it was it was actually like that's it ended the up first being place like, I saw you guys. Yeah, yeah. the Hilton yeah. Garden Inn in uh, Portsmouth, and it was just so funny because when we first got booked there, it was like, oh, this will be kind of nice. Like it'll be a very laid back spot. Mm -hmm. um, but man, people would just like transform over the course of a night, and things would just get really fun. And um, yeah. And this was, I mean, we were doing those as duo shows, too. Yeah. And so right. it was just hard to be like, how are people getting this crazy? Yeah. We, don't, we don't even have that. It's just so much us. Time. It's, it's just, just like us. guitar, harmonica, a couple <laughs> voices. That was it. But, so um, what's the most bizarre experience oh, for you what? guys? Obviously, I mean, you've played a lot of games. Uh, we'll stick with the ones with just me and Pat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Probably... Uh, Probably the cat crawl lady on the table there. Yeah, dumped the, the drinks all over the us. The what now? Yeah. Uh, so we had a we, we played at a, a place in Portsmouth, and there was a, a table in front of us similar to this, and, mm -hmm. and we had set up right in front of it. It was kind of kind of uh, served as a little bit of separation from the rest of the crowd, which was nice um, until folks thought it was a stage to dance on, and so it got really... So got surprise, really actually, I brought someone <laughs> in for you. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. About this yeah. size. Yeah, it really was, like, about this size, and uh, and, and I remember uh, it was just really funny because you're just trying to sit there and play and, and keep your game face on. Right, and not laugh. Just because people are just, yeah. like, doing some a, interesting stuff, so... Well, before beforehand, I had, like, I just had seen a coffee table. All I could think of was just, like, the random beer that might, like... Might splash and like because we had a monitor so we could he hear our voices and instruments back. Right. And um, so I got gone to the hostess station and grabbed a trash bag and I laid it over. And Pat was like, "That's gonna kill the sound." I'm like, "I don't know. Like it feels like it just feels yeah. like something we should do." So I, I he, we ended up leaving it and no joke three times that <laughs> night. So somebody knocked the entire table into us. Drinks, ice. There was probably yeah. more broken glass and ice cubes <laughs> oh on our feet at the end of the night than I had ever experienced. Yeah. And this was at just like a little like uh, what are they like a martini bar type place? Yeah, you know? right. So it was just so funny. Like <laughs> <laughs> you just wouldn't expect it. But but that's the thing. I, and I think some of that goes back to the song list again. You know, I mean, we basically when we came to 
dis determine which songs we were going to play. It was just the songs we liked. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you know, come to find out that that's also the songs that everybody else likes, I guess. Yeah. Right. So, so it's Well, good. those are great because then your energy is there and they're feeding off of that. Yeah. You know, I mean, I know I certainly do when I come to your shows. So. That's one of yeah. the things we've always, like, tried to, to like, especially when we first started out, it's like we, we each took, like, what, each time we got together, we'd be like, all right, bring five songs that, you know, we may or the other person may or may not know, mm -hmm. right. and then let's just play them. We'll see what what happens. And then yeah, see how they sound. Stick, we right. know, we'll keep. If we're just like meh, then obviously that goes on back to the drawing board, and you know, maybe eventually get get uh, recirculated yeah. mm -hmm. at a later date. But our yeah, our song list quickly got to about fifty, I think, at that just doing that. And then it just started to just go nuts because people were started seeing us and they started asking us to play stuff. And so it just kind of naturally grew. And then especially once we started doing the wedding stuff, it just, I think we probably right. learned another 80 songs. So it's organic for you guys. That's yeah, awesome. it is. That's and it awesome. does, never feels forced. I mean, it's just always been to have fun. And right. That's, that's really the most important thing. Right. So. That's what music is all about, in my opinion. <laughs> yep. So. so you guys are doing some originals for us. Yes. yes. I'm so excited. This, this is going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, uh... We actually uh, just showed these tunes. Well, most of them. We we we've done a few of them out live, but uh, a lot of them are a little a little bit new. And we actually were able to play them out for the first time over at the uh, Brick House. About what was it? A couple two weeks, weeks ago, ago tonight. Yeah. About oh, two weeks ago tonight. Yeah. We opened for our Bim Scala Bim. Oh, so, awesome! So you know they're a great band from Boston. We were just thinking we have to we have to show some original tunes rather than just do some covers. Because uh, obviously they write all their stuff, so right. we were prepared. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Excellent. All right, well, you guys ready to play? Let's do it. Sure. Awesome. All right, everyone, here's Wellfleet. All right, you ready? Yeah. This is a song called Wish, uh, and this was, like, one of the first songs I ever wrote, and it has staying power, because uh, I wrote this in high school, which was, like, 2,000 years ago. <laughs> but here we go.
slow me down, I take away my smile and face. I'll catch the scenery and I'll whistle as it passes by. And I'll find myself a place where I can live my perfect life. So I'm stepping out from an easy life into a mess. And I'm breaking out with this fantasy of happiness I wish. I was far away from here, oh, to my lips, in a foreign land of place. Without the fear of work or school, where no one knows my face, or maybe I am just a fool, I guess. But maybe I am just a fool, I guess. So this song is uh, called Final Stand. When I first wrote it, I was actually, it was like the same kind of deal. I was, I was still in high school, and it was kind of like, uh, it started off for me as like, uh, um, I, had, I had very strong opinions of uh, going out into the workforce in corporate America and, you know. Uh, big plans. Yeah, I had big plans. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that whole thing, it was like, I, I, had a, I had some aunts and uncles who were, you know, not too far away from just being straight out hippies, and they instilled in me, uh, that like man's not gonna keep me down kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> then I grew up, uh, but uh, anyway, yeah, this was this was kind of like um, me not wanting to like just be put in this mold, you know, the work way nine to five. the way it, yeah working nine to five like just the way it felt like everybody uh, you go into the guidance counselor office and they're just like, do you have plans for college yet? Do you have plans for this? It's like well no I was actually just hanging out with my friends you know I just that's that's what I'm doing right now I'm 14, you know like, right right right. Um, but yeah, so this is a uh, final stand. Hear me out and I'll tell you what I want to do. 
I'd like to let my music flow through me if it's all the same to you. You try to push me another way, say the only way to get ahead. Well, you're not me, so leave me alone. I don't want the life you led, because I am not satisfied with the average life. I won't be forced to commit me. I do not think it's right. When sometimes it seems like it's got another plan. So this song is called uh, "Caught Me So I Caught Me So I Look Away," and it's uh, it's kind of a fun tune because it's about uh, being in that you know I don't know just like some some big busy hall whether it's a bar or a church or a school cafeteria or wherever and uh, you gotta you catch somebody's eye and you're like oh they're they're cute or they're attractive or whatever and maybe you linger your eyes a little too long and probably a little too long uncomfortable yeah, yeah. and uh, and then so so you look away and then. Um, and then you look back and you realize that they're looking right at you too, and they you're caught like, you. Oh, and you're like, oh, oh man. Yeah, yeah. So, face turns red. So it's kind of like that whole, yeah. That's what this, that's what this is all about. But it's kind of a a, li a little ditty, if you will. Yeah. So without further ado, ready? Mm -hmm. If I only had one chance, I'd 
stops and it is about my uh, asking my wife to, to marry me. I went and I uh, flew to Hawaii because my brother was stationed there and um, and we I had planned the whole thing so I was like so nervous flying with a ring and stuff but uh, it was just really funny because uh, we got there and we were like grilling out this is like kind of just first getting there and <laughs> you know, 
having a couple having a couple pops and uh julie my wife went in to use the bathroom and 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 i started telling my brother that this was the plan like i was gonna ask my wife to uh to marry me and uh and he's he was like man i had this whole speech saved up i was gonna like give you all sorts of so garbage about why you hadn't done it yet and everything he was so excited so happy so we uh i asked him for help picking out a spot which i mean in hawaii it's kind of hard to pick a bad spot i think but but uh, i went in i ended up going up on uh diamond head which sounded beautiful at the time which is like this nice mountain kind of overlooking waikiki beach and it was it was beautiful but hiking up there in like 80 or 90 degree heat was not beautiful and being up there with like 300 tourists who were also taking pictures and stuff. It was kind of hard to find a, a little spot, but it was, uh, it resulted in this song. So I think it's perfect and, and my marriage. So without further ado, <coughs> this is called When the World Stops. You ready? So surprised at my initiative, but I was positive when you were taking a bite. But you and Nona we saw the trap to get a guarantee for eternity. And you almost fell into the ground. I had to hold you up with a steady hug. On the days, and I was dizzy and so amazed by our unity and your energy. And I placed your fingers in the mine. It was the right time. And it was something I've got to say. But our lives are gonna change. Stops, city streets, raindrops, take its affinity, the serenity. When the world spins from the hilltops to the oceans, it's affinity with you. in my head of the many nights that we first shared a bed we were figuring out what the other was all about if we were living in some kind of whirlwind and I placed your fingers in a mine it was the right time oh, oh, oh. it was something I
Let's go break out for somebody and find somebody new. Oh, that's right. Right? That's what I heard. There we go. There we go. All right. Let's go. That's loose. a good one. Feeling it? I do. All right, let's go. If I recall, didn't want to fight. Why'd you go and write a letter? Try and work it out. Space would only make it better. I'm breaking down with the help of someone else who makes me happy. And I'm moving on to someone I can trust who cares about me. Change. I just kept on bending backwards. Made a point to try and make a change so we could keep on pushing forward. I'm breaking down the help of someone else who makes me happy. I'm moving on. This uh, this song here harkens back, harkens back to uh, better days. Back in the younger years. Yeah, the younger years, mm -hmm. when all we cared about is whether or not that uh, that bell in the air was the uh, ice cream truck, uh. and how late we could stay out so we could play we could play flashlight tag. And this one's uh, it's a song called Dancing.
This, uh, this beautiful song here is a song called Break Me. Um, it's gotten some radio play, yep. which is cool. Ow! Always love radio play. Uh, but it's just written about that person that, uh, that maybe you just met. Or maybe you know them for longer. Yeah, or maybe for longer. Maybe it could, could be your boss. Could right? be. It could be. It could be somebody, your parents. I don't know. But they just know how to push your buttons and get you to that breaking point. So this is this is where we arrive at break me. Alright, here we go. It could mean a lot to everyone if you just settle down. Button it right up instead of bossing us around. I'm feeling like a little kid, so what's it all been for? You say another word, and then I'm heading for the door. We pick our own while we carry on our way. We never cease to have the final say. Always seem to break me in. And you always seem to break me. And you always seem to wear me down. And you always seem to make me angry. And you always seem to break me. Just spit it out Or am I not the person That you care enough about Spill your guts and all the facts And face your honesty Cause isn't that the girl That you always want to be Keep it girl Break me in. You always seem to break me. 
opportunities to say what you had to say. You think that you're immune to this, so what's it all been for? I guess I don't want to see you anymore. <laughs> more. No, thank you. That was awesome. Can we add one more thing? So much fun. What? What do you want to oh. And for anybody that uh, is interested, we're going to be playing over at the Lilac City Grill in Rochester, New Hampshire on February 21st. That's right. This one right here? Yeah. This one? Yeah. That one. So uh, one. anybody who's interested, we're going to be uh, going over to the Lilac City Grill <laughs> February 21st uh, to be playing a set there our first time. We're going to be bringing the whole band there. In Rochester, so New Hampshire. It's in Rochester, New Hampshire, yeah. Right, uh, right on Mount Main Street, right across from the old uh, right Foster's Daily Democrat. Yep, right down at 11. Easy way to get there. And you guys have dates coming up in March? Uh, we do. Um, we're going to be playing at this place in Dover called uh, Karas. Yep. I believe it's on the uh, March 16th. It's on the website. 14th. 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 I'm getting dates. Uh, and then uh, we're going to go back April 11th. And we're playing at the garage in Rochester on St. Patty's Day. We're going to come up with some cool Irish tunes. Yeah. And then uh, the old... The old rail, rail pizza. pizza. Um, forgot what it was before, but uh, that's gonna be April fourth. Yep. So in Summersworth. In Summersworth. Yeah, that'll be fun. So we're out there. Yeah, we're gonna be we're gonna be kicking it around. And it's wellfleetmusic.com. Correct. That's right. And well on Facebook music. too. Wellfleet Music and right. everywhere. Yeah. So now, until next month, enjoy the music. <laughs> <laughs> And may I add? <laughs> Just one more. <laughs> and one of them. <laughs> 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 This has been a production of Wolfboro Community TV bringing your community to view.